Recording in progress.
Assalamualaikum. Okay, uh, this is Dr. Muhammad Faisal Khanzada. I am consultant cardiologist and electrophysiologist at Dao Institute of Cardiology, Dao University Hospital, Dao International Medical College. I welcome you all for the today's session. Uh, it's very important, normal and non-arrhythmia ACG interpretation. Okay, so let's begin our talk today. First of all, make sure you don't have to panic, okay? Uh, you just go through the basics. You have to go through the basics. Be relaxed. You, you, you just need to know major points only. And also, pattern recognition is important. Apart from, you know, the basics of ECG, uh, you, you should be able to recognize the ECG pattern of different heart rhythms, normal as well as abnormal, okay? So so by the end of this presentation, you would be able to read a normal ECG, inshallah. So, but you, you don't have to panic. Whenever you have been given an ECG, uh, just relax, okay? And I'll let you know how to read it. So let's start with the basics. So by the end of today's session, you would be able to perform ECG correctly. That is very important. One should know how to perform an ECG. Then how to describe an ECG. Understanding of main features. Identifying basic normal ECGs. And distinguish between ECG arrhythmia and artifacts also. Okay. So, so you should uh, be able to uh, identify the artifacts which are, which are uh, basically... Uh, uh, you know, uh, it's not uh, abnormal, right? So, so, so by recognizing the artifacts, you would be able to differentiate between normal dysrhythmias and artifacts, okay? So let's start with the basic. Electrode placement in a 12 lead ECG. Everyone of you know, very, uh, you know, we know from our previous knowledge, that there are six chest electrodes, okay? So, so, so we say it's a 12 lead ECG, right? So six of them are the chest leads, okay? We call them V1 to V6 or C1 to C6, right? Then there are four limb leads. One of, uh, you know, right arm, left arm, le right and left leg, right leg. You can write, uh, uh, you know, uh, just uh, remember this by, ride your green bike okay ride your green bike or uh, other way is very simple just like a signal you have to start from the right limb then uh, red yellow green okay red yellow green and don't forget the right limb is you know the black one is the uh, we, we place the electrode on the right limb and uh, that is basically a neutral okay so i hope you all know about this but but you should be you know uh, very careful uh, while placing these electrodes why it's important because if you place these v1 v2 higher up like in in these spaces so it can you know uh, you know uh, misguide you uh, and it can you know uh, mistakenly be interpreted as uh, abnormal ecg or st elevation mi or bundle branch blocks, you know, different uh, abnormalities. So this is just because of the wrong placement of the ECG. I'll, I'll let you know why it happens. First, first of all, you remember, there are 12 leads in total. Six of them are placed in the, or over the chest wall and uh, four limb electrodes. Okay, so six plus four are 10. So why we call it as a 12 lead ECG? Uh, you can answer this in the inbox, okay? So we'll discuss it again. So for the chest electrodes, V1 is placed at the fourth intercostal space. Remember, it's not second. This is fourth intercostal space, right external angle, just like this, okay? Then V2 is placed in the fourth in this, all right? So here, 
So how do we find the fourth intercoastal space? It's very simple. Palpate the manipur, uh, uh, manipur external angle. Uh, we call it as uh, angle of Lewis. And uh, directly adjacent to the second rib. This is this one is the first rib. This one is the second rib. This is angle of Lewis, right? So if we go there, so we go in the this one is second rib. Below the second rib is the second intercoastal space, right? And likewise, you can go the third rib, the third intercoastal space, fourth rib, fourth intercoastal space. Okay. So this is how it happens, right? One, two, three, four. The fourth intercoastal space. This one is fourth. So V1 and V2 are placed in the fourth intercoastal space, right? First go to the V4. It is placed over the apex, fifth intercoastal space, mid clavicular line. Okay? Clavicular line, V4 is placed here. Okay? This one is fifth intercoastal space. Then where do we place V3? Halfway between V2 and V4. This is V2. This is V4. So we place the V3 in between V3 and uh, v, uh, V2 and V4. The V5 is at the same level, but on the anterior axillary line, okay? So everybody of you know from the anatomy, anterior axillary line, okay? So V5 is placed at the anterior axillary line. And then V6 at the same level, just like V, uh, uh, V4, okay? But at the mid axillary line, okay? So this is how we place electrodes over the chest wall, okay? And the, the, if if you see, uh, you know, three dimensionally, so these, what does a lead do? What does a lead means? The lead records the electrical current that is flowing in through the conduction system of the heart, okay? It is just the direction. And so, so from different direction, like V6 will see the heart from this direction, V1 would see the heart right uh, in front of the heart, okay? So this is how it happens. So, so how are the 12 leads on the ECG? Like, so, so, so V1 to V6, we have already read. Then what are the other leads? AVL, AVF, AVR, okay? And these are the, you know, uh, uh, limb leads. And then uh, lead one, two, and three. Okay. So why? So th this is the question we, I already asked of you. That why do we have uh, nine or ten electrodes, but we say twelve lead ECG? Okay. So I let you know by the end of this presentation. So electrodes around the heart. Okay. So this is, everybody of you know, uh, the Ethiopian triangle uh, who invented this uh, description of the ECG. So this, this is how the AVR uh, see the heart from here, from the right side, AVL from the left side, okay? And AV, AVF here at the inferior. And these are the lead one, two, and three, okay? So we, uh, plot a vector uh, while interpreting an ECG, okay? Whenever we talk about axis, so we deal with these uh, angles, right? So these, uh, this is how the electrodes are uh, placed uh, at the right and the left arms and the limb leads. Limb leads look the heart in the coronal plane, okay? AVL 1 and 2 are lateral leads, okay? They see the heart from the lateral side. Let's go back. AVL one, okay, one and AVL they they see from the left side. Two, three and AVF these are the inferior wall. Remember this, okay. Whenever we say acute inferior wall MI, so we see ST elevation in two, three and AVF. Whenever we say lateral wall MI, we see ST elevation in one AVL, and at times lead two as well, okay. Then AVR, the right side of the heart, okay? So AVR, we see right side of the heart. So these limb electrodes uh, uh, basically are seeing the flow of current 
uh, across the conduction system of the heart. So let's see this ECG, okay? So everybody of us know there it, this is 12 lead ECG, okay? We went to V6, then we have got one, two, and three, then AVR, AVL, and AVF, okay? And uh, this is called as a rhythm lead. Lead two is always most you know, like it's it's better to have rhythm lead to be two. Okay, so we can take any of these leads as a rhythm lead, but lead two is best because we, uh, the, the P wave can be seen uh, uh, best in lead two. Okay, so this how do we read this ECG? This is a twelve lead ECG with a rhythm lead. Okay, all right, and. Uh, the other thing we, we should uh, know uh, while reading the ECG uh, is the standardization, okay? The paper is speed should be 25 uh, meter per second. And the voltage, if you see this bar, so this is a standard 10. One small square is one millivolt, 10 small square is 10, 10 millivolts, okay? So, so it should be 10, millivolts or two large boxes okay if it is single box it means that you know it's five if it's larger than 10 it's above so 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 standard uh, lead has a voltage of 10 millivolts along with that a paper speed of 25 meter per second so okay so this is normal ecg uh, how, how can we say normal remember five points rate, rhythm, access, then intervals, and then the injury pattern, okay? So if we talk about rate, we, we read the ACC like 300, 150, 100, okay? I'm not going into the details, but this is how we calculate the rate between the RR, okay? So if we talk about this one, 300, 150, 100, and just like, uh, three boxes from here, two boxes from here. So it's almost four large boxes. So 300, 150, 100, and 75. The rate is around 75. Rhythm is sinus. When we call a sinus rhythm, whenever there's an upright P wave and lead to, okay? Followed by a QRS. See, every P wave is followed by a QRS, all right? And in lead V1, the P wave is slightly bifid, okay, slightly. So then we call it as a sinus rhythm. Then axis, remember, lead one, two should be upright, okay? The rule of thumb, we at times we say that both thumbs should be upward. If the right thumb, we call it as lead one, is downward, we say right axis deviation. If lead two or the left thumb is downwards or this one is negative like if it becomes negative it means it's left axis deviation just remember this at your level okay so if both are up the axis is normal then we we see the different intervals you 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 must have read it like pr interval qrs width qt interval okay so these are a few intervals which you should be seeing in a quick glance, right? Then, so so we talk about rate, then we talk about rhythm, then we talked about axis, rate, rhythm, axis, then intervals, okay? So there are normal intervals and abnormal intervals. You should remember the normal interval, like PR interval is around uh, 120 to 200 milliseconds, right? Likewise, or you can say 0.22, to 0.12 to 0.22 second, uh, uh, two seconds. Likewise, uh, QRS width is maximum QRS is 120 milliseconds or three small squares. So, so you will just you just have to go through these uh, numbers and uh, you will remember it. It's very easy. So, so after the interval, you have to see the injury pattern. Injury pattern we see in the ST segments. This is ST segment. Okay. So it is starts from the end of R and the beginning of T. So this is ST segment. 
if it goes below the baseline just like this so we we say st depression if we go upward okay we say st elevation so there are different causes of you know st elevation but if you see there is no st elevation because for an elevation it should be more than 1 mm so it's 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 you know it's less than one small square okay so it's not significant from the baseline okay whenever if 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 it if it ended as at this place then we can say that elevation okay anyways so rate rhythm axis intervals and injury pattern this is how you need to read the ecg and uh, if you go through this pattern you won't be able to miss any point okay so always always whenever you write or read a ecg just write rate rhythm axis intervals and then injury pattern and then then write it accordingly okay you won't miss anything so this is a normal sinus rhythm this is a 12 lead ecg with a rhythm step the rate is around 75 mini uh, 75 uh, uh, beats per minute uh, rhythm is sinus underlying rhythm is sinus there is no uh, obvious uh interval uh, the normal the intervals are normal the axis is normal and uh, there is no injury pattern so it's a normal 12 lead ecg this is how we read it so these are the lateral leads as we, as we discussed one and avl okay they these leads see the heart from the lateral side okay from the left side these are inferior leads okay two three avf so the, they see the heart from the inferior wall, okay, from the inferior side. Then AVR see the heart from the right side. So this, that's why it, it is in a normal ECG, the AVR is negative, okay? So remember, I, 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 I told you to remember the pattern. In a normal ECG, AVR would be always negative. Why? Because the current flows away from the AVR. AVR is at the right side, okay? Let me show you the pick again. Okay, so AVR is seeing the heart from the right side. So current flows from this, like just from the sinus node to the AV node and then left and uh, through the bundle of his to the right and left bundle branches. Okay, so AVR would become negative because the current is flowing away from AVR. Whenever AVR becomes positive, you should be, you know, very. Uh, careful about it because then it means the current is coming towards AVR from like abnormal place from LV and most often it happens in ventricular tachycardia because whenever the tachycardia arises from ventricle so the current flows from the ventricle towards you know right side or you know all over the heart in that case AVR become positive otherwise normal in a normal 12 dvc AVR is negative see AVR is negative. The other thing, V1 would be slightly, V1 would have a slight tiny R wave. And if we see there is a increased progression of R wave till V6. So in V1, the R wave in a normal sinus rhythm, R wave would be a tiny R wave. And in V6, the R wave would be maximum. This is the normal pattern of the 12 lead ECG or the chest leads, okay? So we talked about lateral leads, inferior, right side. Okay, so leads, what they tell you. Each lead can be thought of as looking at an area of myocardium we have discussed. So V1 to V6, look the heart on the transverse plane, okay? I showed you the figure. V1 and V2, look at the interior of the heart or right ventricle. Okay, remember this because these are placed right in front of the heart. Okay, in the fourth intercostal space. So they look at the anterior of the heart. Then V3 and V4 see anterior and septal. Okay, because they are placed a little bit lower than V1, V2. So they see anterior wall and the septal wall. And V5, V6 are lateral and left ventricle. They, they, are, they see the heart from the left side from the lateral side of the they see left vertical. So let's come again to this ECG, okay? This is 
anterior uh, V1C anterior or RV. Okay. So if there is an RV infarct which happens along with the acute inferior wall MI, so VC ST elevation in lead V1. Okay. So why? Because V1 is placed right in front of the right ventricle. Okay. This is also anterior and right ventricle. This is anteroceptal. The V3 is anteroceptal. Uh, lead. It sees the anteroceptal wall of the heart. Then V4, anteroceptal. V5, lateral wall. V6, lateral wall. So this is how these leads see the heart in a transverse plane. Okay? Remember this. V1 and V2, anterior and RV. V3 and V4 enteroceptal, V5 and V6 lateral. So we have already discussed that how the electrodes are being placed. Now you can understand better V1, V2, and then all V6. And this is how this they see the heart. Red, yellow, green. Okay. This is the pattern for and then the black one or the right leg would be neutral. So elements of the trace. This is a no, this is a, you know a single QRS complex. We say is a single beat or single QRS complex. This is how the current flows from through the atria atrial depolarization. We say it's a P wave. Then there is a PR interval with a straight line you can see, okay? There is no, no electrical activity, okay? Why there is no electrical activity? Because of the delay in the AV node, which naturally has, the AV node has, right? So impulse goes slowly, or, okay? So in that particular time, it is called as PR segment, okay? And, uh, this is PR segment and this is the PR interval. We say beginning of P to the beginning of Q wave. So we say PR interval and this segment is known as PR segment. Then it starts a slight first downward deflection after the P wave is a Q wave. So tiny Q waves are normal, but if it's more than two small squares, we call it as abnormal. Uh, Q wave and uh, abnormal Q waves or pathological Q waves uh, are most often be seen with a history of myocardial infarction in the past. Then this is QRS complex, okay? And then where the R ends, the S wave starts. So, you know, at the end of the R and the uh, before, before this, you know, this is called as ST segment from, from S to the beginning of T wave. We call this as ST segment. Then what about the QT interval as I was, you know, telling you rate, rhythm, axis and intervals. So intervals are these PR interval, okay, QT interval. So it, it, it starts from beginning of Q wave to the end of T wave, Q, QT interval. So it has also got significance in long QT syndromes or drug induced long QT. You should know how to uh, how to at least recognize QT interval. Normal QT interval is uh, 380 to 420 milliseconds. Okay, but it can be up to 460 or 470. It's fine. Above that or uh, above 500 QT interval rate is, is is abnormal, and it should be. Uh, the patient is high risk if the QT interval is more than uh, 500 milliseconds for cardiac arrhythmias. So, so the, you should remember these elements of the trace: P wave, QRS complex, ST segment, QT interval, PR interval. Yeah. Relationship, what's the relationship? As I have told you, atrial depolarization, ventricular depolarization, and atrial repolarization occurs during the QRS complex, but we cannot see it because of the high, huge voltage of, uh, you know, ventricular depolarization. So, so atrial depolarization that hidden in the QRS. Okay, 
and then in ventricular repolarization we see the t wave okay interpreting the ecg so everybody should know or should see about the name it should be written on the ecg date of birth is not that important but you can you can see because of age or you can you can write down the age then time and date is very important when that particular ecg has been done i mean it is done in 2021 or 2015 if you don't find a time and date you cannot say which time it is and if if you are writing a time and date you are you know serving that patient okay it's 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 a blessing you know because it can tell you a lot of things the ecg can tell you a lot of things what is happening inside the conduction system of the heart so indication uh, should be there uh, why are we uh, you know uh, the ecg has been ordered so is it because of the chest pain or the routine checkup any previous or subsequent ecgs it will give you any certain changes can be recognized by seeing or comparing with the old ecg okay so always ask about previous or subsequent ecg is that part of a serial ecg sequence in which case it may be numbered so why it happens at times you do serial ecg like patient arrive and you do ecg number 1 at like just for example at 10 o'clock then your senior ordered ecg number 2 or second ecg or repeat ecg then it it it, it uh, let's say it's done in uh, at 10:15 and the other one is at 10:30 so so this is uh, you know if if it's in a sequence you should write number 1 2 3 4 then calibration okay that is important like it is a uh, you know a normal strain drive is be uh, the speed and the voltage okay the calibration is important then you uh, you know you need to know or write the rate what is the rate then rhythm is it sinus or you know if 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 the rhythm is other than sinus you you know you can't say sinus rhythm okay so we'll come through those uh, conditions later on the rate rhythm axis elements of the tracing in each lead we have discussed so this is how while interpreting the ecg you should know the name age time and date indication for the ecg and any previous subsequent ecgs in the past being done or currently whatever ecg is being done should be in order that check that your ecg is calibrated correctly that, as i told you 10 milli millimeter is equal to 1 millivolt okay so height is 10 mm so you know this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 this is a standard box for the voltage and 10 mm is equal to 1 millivolt look for a reference pulse which should be rectangular looking wave somewhere near the left of the paper it should be 10 mm okay so paper speed should be 25 mm per second and uh, why do we call it 25 mm per because 25 is small square is divided by the five large square equals to 1 second okay so this is how the calibration goes so information on the ec let's see mr qc okay uh the other thing is not that clear okay anyways so apart from the other thing seems like you know the rate between 150 100 75 or between 75 to 100 is the rate rhythm is uh, abnormal rhythm it, it's ectopic rhythm actually could be and uh, you know uh, sinus if if the p wave is upright you can say it's a sinus rhythm 
but uh, the important thing in this you can see these vibrations okay what is this this is not you know cardiac arrhythmia if you see you can compare this lead to there is nothing okay so this is basically artifact and uh, people can you know if don't recognize they can just say it's a ventricular fibrillation or something is happening so be very careful about you know labeling any ecg and unless you are confirmed by yourself or so by a senior so what you need to look for are the limbs lead are set up correctly whenever you see an ecg being done you should you should see how is it being done and are the limb leads set up correctly as i told you other chest leads set up correctly the position of the chest leads is also important and is the ecg is free of artifact or not so these three things you should remember while uh, interpreting an ecg so as i told you avr becomes remains always negative lead one always positive r wave progression you should be able to recognize and uh, you know as i told you normal progression of r wave is from r wave to v6 it it grow it, it, it increases the height of you know uh, r wave till v6 and is it small or tall okay so that is also important because in obese patients or uh, in pneumothorax and you know in a female patient uh, you can find a small uh complexes and there are other causes for small complexes i am not going to the details so now let's come again to the ecg so i have i have put it you know uh different ecg traces for your practice as well okay so so you can you know uh, recognize the normal ecgs and their patterns and exclude the artifacts okay so if we see what is abnormal in this so uh i hope you people if go through the sequence you can recognize see avr is positive in this okay so this this there there might be something wrong with this ecg avr should be negative you as you remember with our knowledge okay and also the one and avl are also negative so there is some problem okay so what must have have happened there is a limb lead reversal like avr has been put it on the left side and avl is put it on the right side okay so that is becoming totally negative as we know one and avl are the lateral leads so this is you know wrongly placed uh, electrodes over the uh, limbs okay this is recording in progress so see this what is this next trace v1 to v6 if we see there's a normal pattern normal progression of the r wave rate is 300 150 100 75s around 60 60 the rate rhythm is uh, sinus upright p wave in lead 2 and you know the v1 and axis whatever axis normal v1 and v2 both are up okay so we say normal uh axis then intervals seems to be fine in a gross uh, uh view then what is this 
this is something a wide bizarre thing so it could be a pvc or it could be artifact premature ventricular contraction can be seen just like that but uh, the thing is uh, they have uh, most of the time uh, post pvc compensatory pause because the sinus gets reset itself okay so this is also an example of artifact so again you can see artifacts in the lead 1 and lead 3 another example of electrical interference okay so something might be happening around uh, so 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 the ecg interpret this or uh, just like this okay so be confident enough to recognize these patterns or just just remember these patterns this is electrical interference that can happen with the electrical appliances and uh, uh, different things that that's happening around like muscle twitching that can lead to these kind of artifacts okay basic observation heart rate rhythm is it regular or sinus intervals pr qrs and st segment i have discussed already so if the heart is regular count the number of large square between the r wave this is how i was calculating r to r interval in the large squares okay in between the large squares so if four large squares 300 divided by 4 is equal to 75 beats per minute okay so this is how we calculate the rate box method so number of large boxes if the number of large box between the two rr complexes is 1 the rate would be 300 okay if the number of large boxes is 6 the rate would be 50 okay if the number of large boxes between the two r wave is 2 the rate would be 150 if the number of large boxes is 3 the rate would be 100 okay so this is how we calculate 300 150 100 75 60 okay so another example of uh 12 ddcg where we can see clearly v1 to v6 are there three limb layers and v1 2 and 3 so what's happening here this is a st elevation in lead 2 3 and avf okay so what what it could be acute inferior wall mi 2 3 avf okay 2 3 avf and if you see this th these are st depressions you see one and avl may there are st depressions so now you can see it's not at the baseline it's below the baseline okay so we call it as st depression or reciprocal changes whenever injury occurs at a particular you know just in this example the injury is being the patient's heart is suffering from inferior wall okay so so the leads which are opposite to the inferior leads would become negative like just like one and avl they become negative uh we when i uh, i don't know but v2 may you can clearly see in the you know st depression so also if you see v3 uh, v5 and v6 these are also elevated so acute inferior lateral wall mi this could be its description Ooh. so don't get confused with this rhythm okay make your life easy just say it's a 12 lead electrocardiogram with a white complex tachycardia life is easy okay so why you know it's a ventricular tachycardia they have uh, uh you know white complex okay so whenever rhythm comes from the ventricle it becomes 
wider okay until unless there is some evidence you like so you have to clinically correlate whenever you are interpreting an ecg jo, don't jump into the diagnosis okay you you, you should be giving a differentials okay and just like that so this is a wide complex tachycardia i am not going into the details of vt now so cardiac impulse originates from the sinus so every qrs must be preceded by a p wave okay multifocal pvc is more than one shift okay so see sinus rhythm then a qrs with a compensatory pause then sinus rhythm compensatory pause okay so we call it as multifocal pvcs so the pr interval is measured between the start of the p to the start of the qrs okay therefore if there is a q wave before the r wave the pr interval is measured from the start of the p wave to the start of the q wave but not the start of the r wave so this is complicated don't just remember pr interval okay between the uh, start of p to the start of qrs okay another ecg so it's a 12 lead ecg with a rhythm strip v5 as a rhythm strip okay and uh, i cannot comment on the uh, standardization because it's not written here usually it has been written here or some somewhere at the paper the paper speed and the millivolts but as you can see clearly if you don't have the numbers but you can see that it is the standard you know as we discussed this is standard box which shows uh the voltage okay so seems to be voltage is fine so what is abnormal in this rhythm is underlying sinus p wave followed by qrs axis is normal v1 and v2 are positive and what about the intervals what has happened to this like normal interval is uh you know one large box or 200 millisecond but this is crossing the one large box okay the pr interval so the pr interval is very uh, high like more than 200 milliseconds in this vision okay so we can also call it as uh, uh you know uh first degree av block okay a pr prolongation so i hope you understand so so rate rhythm axis intervals if we talk about intervals the pr interval is uh, is you know uh is 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 increased in this so one large box is 200 milliseconds and it is more than one is small is 40 milliseconds so so 2 uh, 200 and 280 milliseconds is the pr interval in this is okay so let's talk about a 40 year old with a chest pain and palpitation so this is a ecg with a history of palpitation in the past so i know uh, you must have heard about wpw wolf parkinson white syndrome and this is the another example you can clearly see the delta wave okay this is we call it as delta okay so let me take the pointer so this one is delta after the pr if you see how much is the pr it's 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 very tiny here the p ends and the qr is starts so it's like uh, you know uh, delta wave okay wpw pattern of the ecg see 